I'm Lieutenant Commander Phil Clark, and I'm the Senior Observer, Airborne Surveillance and Control uh, on 820 Naval Air Squadron, based here at Royal Naval Air Station, Cold Rose. So the capability we're bringing into service uh, involves the large radar that you see on the side of the aircraft, um, and, and that's uh, housed and protected uh, in a large Kevlar bag, um, hence the term bagger, um, uh, which either explains me as an observer or potentially the, the aircraft itself uh, when it's uh, fitted with the radar. So um, within the bag uh, we have a, a long-range surveillance radar which allows us to launch from the deck of um, a ship, uh, let's say Queen Elizabeth carrier, uh, and launch to a height of about a mile or a mile and a half high uh, to look over the horizon. Uh, and uh, our job is to detect threats that maybe um, are incoming towards the task group. That could be an aircraft, that could be other ships, or it could be a missile launch from uh, one of these platforms. Uh, and it's our job to uh, detect these threats as early as possible so that the task group can respond and protect itself. Um, so uh, in, in tandem with, uh, with a lot of other airborne uh, and uh, maritime assets in, in the task group, we'll, we'll sit high above the task group uh, and we'll be providing um, a communications link between ships and other aircraft, uh, including uh, F-35 Lightning, uh, as you may be aware of. Um, this will allow um, strike aircraft to disappear off over the horizon, carry out their mission and maintain communications with the task group uh, and also receiving a feed of information from the task group which is crucial for them to achieve their mission uh, before then returning and returning safely um, uh, to continue with operations. Yeah, so the, the crew constitution is actually um, typically only three people uh, and unlike a lot of other assets um, uh, that you'll see um, flying around, we operate typically with a single pilot and two observers. And the pilot, of course, takes care of flying the air aircraft, um, keeping us safe and bringing us back safely. Uh, the two observers will um, focus mostly on, on tactics um, and uh, they'll both uh, be trained to the stand of a tactical mission commander, able to uh, use the equipment that we've got on the side of the aircraft, uh, the radar and other sensors uh, to provide uh, a real-time intelligence product to the task group. Uh, and looking at that information as it comes in and processing some of it themselves um, and uh, sharing it with other assets uh, so that they can all coordinate in the fight. It's a really exciting milestone for us. Uh, having this kit attached to a, a Merlin Mark II uh, and being able to take the capability forward is, is uh, fantastic. And uh, from a personal perspective, having been involved in airborne surveillance control all the way back to 2006, it's another step in my journey uh, and I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, my name is Lieutenant Commander Anthony Cox. I'm the Air Engineering Officer at 820 Naval Air Squadron. My job here is to ensure that we take uh, the new capability uh, and deliver aircraft to the front line. Uh, so the capability that we're developing here is the ASAC capability, Airborne uh, Surveillance and Control. Um, it is a modification to the Merlin Mark II aircraft um, from the normal ASW um, anti-submarine warfare role. So as you can see on the aircraft, the main thing, uh, the difference is the huge bag on the side, what we call the bag, uh, and that is the, uh, the radar, uh, which basically creates a picture uh, of the surface and the uh, airborne uh, threat uh, to the aircraft and the fleet it's protecting. So the aircraft um, is at its position currently on the ground um, is the bag in the stow position, uh, in the up position. After the aircraft takes off, that bag inflates um, and it moves to the down position. In the down position, uh, it has a radar dish inside which spins around um, and creates the picture that the uh, observers will look at on the screen. Inside the aircraft, we have um, a couple of consoles um, where the two observers sit uh, and use the um, equipment to uh, develop that picture uh, and share it with the assets in the fleet. So as you can see on the aircraft, it is a very big bag. It sits on the side, it has a huge amount of weight. Um, it's very different to the original design of the aircraft. So there's a huge amount of work uh, in adding that additional weight to the side, side of the aircraft. Um, the consoles on the inside are very different and all the electronics and avionics that go with that. So there's a huge amount of modifications that need to take place on the aircraft, both to the airframe um, and the electrical and mission systems to accept this new capability and integrate it into the aircraft. So this is the first aircraft. Um, as we um, take this aircraft and develop our capability, um, we learn to use it um, and uh, we increase our, our knowledge of the systems. Uh, then we take it on board HMS Queen Elizabeth as part of the Op Fortis uh, 
um, operation this summer um, and use it in the task group uh, with the F-35s and the rest of the assets in the task group. So all Merlin Mark II aircraft will be converted to be able to take this. Um, it is defined as a, a roll kit so we can move it around between the aircraft um, and all the modifications will take place to the aircraft so they can all accept this kit and we can convert them back into the ASW role um, as we need to in the future. Uh, it's a very significant moment. This is the first of a uh, number of aircraft that we'll be converting into the uh, ASAC role. Um, it provides us with a fantastic capability to the fleet uh, and to the Queen Elizabeth ship uh, and the task group.